Okay, everyone, uh, good morning. This is Karen Troy, and today we're going to be talking about center of mass and uh, a topic called anthropometry, which is really understanding the relationship uh, between body size and different segment parameters. And so uh, this is sort of with a little bit of apologies because, of course, um, you know that this week we ended up doing our center of mass laboratory uh, rather than the two-dimensional versus three-dimensional kinematics lab that we had intended. So um, one of the things that we always think about in biomechanics is that the body is really uh, a linked system of rigid segments. And each segment can be described as, as sort of a rigid body that has a mass, and it has a center of mass, and has inertial properties, and all of these segments are connected by joints. And so on your little stick guy here, um, you can see that often we talk about dividing things up into the, the foot, uh, the shank or the lower leg, uh, the thighs, the pelvis, the trunk, uh, and then upper arms, lower arms, and hands. And so often we'll use sort of a 15 link system to describe different types of motion. Now, um, one of the things that's really important for us to understand about each of the, about the entire body, if we want to be able to measure forces or moments that are required by our different joints, is to understand where our center of mass is. And of course, uh, we can either think about center of mass of our entire body, uh, or we can think about center of mass of each of the individual segments, um, or sometimes people call it center of gravity. Um, so you can see in this illustration here, typically when we're standing up, uh, the center of mass is really defined as sort of this invisible point. And if you were to take all of your entire body mass and concentrate it at that point, um, that's, really where it, that's really where the mass would be located. Or another way to think about it is that if you were to tie a string onto that location and, and hang somebody or some part of your body from that location, then uh, your, your person would be perfectly balanced. So for most adults, center of mass is located oh, you know, somewhere around the pelvis. Uh, for, for women, it tends to be a little bit lower than for men relative to their body height. Um, but usually it's you know, somewhere a bit more than halfway up. And it really it has to do with the distribution of all of the mass segments. Okay? So in this uh, first picture here, you can see that uh, you know, center of mass is maybe located down here around the pelvis. Uh, if you raise your arms, of course, then your center of mass is going to move up a bit towards your arms because your arms have mass and now you've moved them further up and so that's going to change the center of mass location. Um, at the same time, of course, uh, you, can, you could bend down and now you see in this case here the center of mass is actually located at a theoretical point that's outside of the body itself and that's because you have a mass of the, of the torso and a mass of the head and the arms and the legs and uh, the only way that this person could actually balance in, in a theoretical way is if you, if you sort of hung him by a string that was attached at this point here. So center of mass doesn't necessarily have to be located within the body, um, and especially for curved uh, segments or for curved shapes, it, it may not be necessarily located within the body. So one of the ways that we often use to calculate center of mass in biomechanics is to uh, calculate a weighted average of all of the different segments and then we, we add them up together in space. And so you can imagine in this particular case here, um, this is supposed to be the head, right? Um, so, sorry, my picture is a little bad. Um, but here you can see, so the head has a mass, um, the torso has a mass right here, um, you can see the pelvis has a mass here, the, the thighs have a mass down here, um, the shank, the feet, every segment has a mass and each of those masses may be different, but each segment uh, has a mass which, locate, which is located at is its respective center of mass. Um, so this, for example, right here is the center of mass of the thigh, and then this is referred to as, this would be like the weight of the thigh, okay? So, and then same thing for all of the other segments. So if we want to know where the entire body's center of mass is, we've got to add them all up, and, and we do what's called a weighted average. And that is that we can say, uh, basically, the sum of the, the mass of a segment times the center of mass location of that segment um, is going to equal and then, so that's going to give you a mass times the center of mass. So just to think about units, for example, um, this mass is going to be in kilograms, for example. 
and the center of mass is going to have a location like x and y coordinates, right? So that maybe is in something like meters or centimeters. Um, so that's going to give us something with units, kilograms, and, and meters, right? So if we then we have we want to eventually get a center of mass location in meters. So we've got to divide this by uh, the total mass. Okay, so that's in kilograms. So again, we have kilogram meters divided by kilograms, and that's going to give us a center of mass location in meters. Okay, so one thing um, that I want to make sure that everybody does throughout this entire lecture is to be very, very careful about units. And the reason that I think it's important to be careful about units is uh, partly because they're important, right? but also because they will help you to error check and to figure out whether you are thinking about something in the right way. So for example, if I were just to take this, this weighted average right here, right, then, uh, then I, might th I might come up with a, an answer where I say, oh my gosh, you know, my center of mass is equal to uh, the mass of my segments times the center of mass of my segments, right? But then if I don't divide it by my total mass, this is going to give me total um, center of mass uh, in terms of meters, right? So, so by, by doing this, I can basically error check to make sure that I have the right units, which is to say that my center of mass location should be maybe x and y coordinates in, in meters. Okay, so in this case here, I could take a weighted average, and uh, what I could end up with is something like my body center of mass is, is located here. Why does this matter? Okay, so imagine now, right, here's a person doing a push-up, and you can imagine that if you are, um, if you're doing a push-up, then I, I actually have, push-ups are difficult uh, exercises to do, partly because, of course, they take force in your arms, but partly because they, they, take, they require uh, abdominal muscles to hold your body up, right? So when you move from being a foot push-up to a knee push-up, for example, one of the things that you're doing is you're, you're shortening this distance here, right? And when you do that, what you find is that, and, and the other thing you're doing is you're effectively uh, removing this mass right here, right? And so when you do that, basically what you find is that now your center of mass is going to shift up towards your arms, and that's going to make it easier to do the push-up, and it's going to make it easier on your abdominal muscles to do the push-up. So where our center of mass is located affects how difficult or how easy it is to perform various activities. Okay, so in this lab you guys have already worked on finding a center of mass uh, using force plates or using a bathroom scale. Okay, so here's uh, sort of an example of, of what this is. Um, so you guys have already measured your distance. You have a person who's maybe laying on the scale. And then, um, and of course, you know that when you put a weight on the scale uh, on this board, if it was directly centered over the board, then uh, the force plate or the scale would be taking half the weight. And then the support at the feet would be taking the other half of the weight. And so uh, we can think about this a little bit in terms of uh, a weighted average or a moment equation is another way to think about it. Um, let me look. Okay, I'm going to go back here. Just wanted to make sure I didn't mess up the next slide. Um, so, so one way to think about this, right, is, is here's our center of mass is somewhere right about there, right? And um, let's call this distance D, okay? And then um, let's call this, this distance, this height here, let's call it 150 centimeters, okay? So there's kind of a shorter person there who's maybe 150 centimeters tall. Um, okay, so that means that this distance right here is going to be 150 minus D, right? Okay, now what I'd like to do is I'm just going to cut uh, and I'm going to take the moment about the force plate, okay? So I'm just going to take a uh, moment about the force plate, okay? And so what I know that would have to be if I took away this support here, right? Let's, let's just cut it right there, okay? So that's going to be have to equal to um, okay, so I've got, and, and let's let's say I have my weight is, uh, let's say let the weight uh, equal 500 newtons, okay? Um, okay, so what I know then is that I'm going to pretend like my weight is all acting at the location of center of mass, okay? So this is 500 newtons, okay? And then I'm going to have some kind of a reading that I get on my force plate, okay? 
so or my scale. So let's let the scale Okay, so we're going to let the scale reading equal, oh, let's say uh, 280 newtons. Oops, 200. Ah! Let's see if I can erase this. Ooh, look at that. Okay, 280 newtons. Okay, so in this situation here, I have a person who I know weighs 500 newtons, um, and I, now I've measured while they're laying on the scale, the scale reads 280 newtons and I'm going to just ignore the weight of the board that this person is laying on for now. And I want to calculate what my distance is to my center of mass, D, okay? So I'm going to think about this in terms of moments, and I'm going to think about it in terms of equilibrium. Um, so just to remind you, whenever I think about equilibrium, I have three equations of equilibrium that I can write. Right? I can write that the sum of the forces in the x direction have to equal zero, the sum of the forces in the y direction have to equal zero, and the sum of the moments has to equal zero. Okay, so these are my equations of equilibrium. Okay, and this is always going to be the case if I have a static equilibrium. Okay, so in this case here, um, I'm, I'm going to take the moment about the force plate, and I know that uh, that's going to help me to figure out what everything has to be. Okay, actually, you know what? Let's let's do this right here. Let's write out just an equilibrium equation. Okay, so let's say the sum of the moments has to equal zero, okay? And that's going to equal whatever, okay, so I know what my force plate, I'm going to I'm going to reference everything um, from the feet here, okay? So I'm going to have uh, the force at the feet, right? That's going up, okay? So let's make this in the y direction, and this is the x direction. So my force at my feet, and that's times my distance, which is zero, right? So moments is always a force times a perpendicular distance. Then, and that's, okay, so that's my distance zero. Oops, it's not D, it's zero. Sorry. Okay, then I have my 500 Newton force, and that's times my distance D, which I want to find out, okay? And if I were to pin the feet here and then pull down with this force that's going to cause a rotation that is clockwise, okay? So I'm going to give a sign convention here, which is that I'm going to call a positive moment counterclockwise, okay? So this is going to be a negative moment and this D is going to be in centimeters, okay? And now I've got my reaction force at the force plate, right? So that's 280 newtons and my D there, I know, it's 150 centimeters, 150 centimeters. And if I were to push up, right, if I were to push up at my force plate, that would cause a counterclockwise rotation. So that's going to be a positive moment, okay? And those are, in fact, all of the forces that I have accounted for in this, okay? So I have my, my foot force, which is something, but it's, a, it's got a net moment of zero because I'm going to be taking the moment about that point there. Right, I've got my weight right here, and then I have the force at my head. Okay, and I know that all of these has to add up to equal zero because that's my moment equilibrium equation. Okay, so if I do this, right, I can move my 500 newtons over to the other side. So I say 500 newtons times d centimeters, right? And that has to equal 280 newtons times 150 centimeters, right? Which, um, the calculator. Right, so uh, 280 times 150, so that's 4,200, I'm sorry, 42,000 Newton centimeters, right? So then I can divide everything by 500, right? I find that D is equal to 42,000 divided by 500, which is equal to 84 centimeters, okay? So now, um, my question is, is that right? Okay, so I'm going to do a reality check and think about it, right? I have a, a height that's 150 centimeters. I have now that I've set my center of mass is 84 centimeters, so that's a bit more than half. And in fact, I have a bit more than half of my body mass um, above there, so that seems to be about right. So this, this is a pretty good reality check. So um, in your lab, um, I showed you a slightly different way to do the force plate calculation. To me, this is a little bit more of an intuitive way, simply because it doesn't involve too many formulas, it just involves equilibrium. But you should use uh, whatever method works best for you effectively, you're doing the same thing. 
So what you've got to do is, is basically balance out the equations, okay? Um, now, one of the other things that you'll have to do in your lab, and um, which is useful to do often, is to use segmentation methods for finding uh, a seg uh, center of mass, okay? And so, for example, when you go to do the gymnast method, um, you're going to break the gymnast up into different segments, and then you need to calculate the weighted average um, in which the weighting factor is each segment's mass. Okay, so I'm going to just show you a, a quick example of that. So you can imagine, for example, that we have uh, a situation here: somebody's trunk, and here's somebody's arm, and we'll say that their trunk weighs 20 kilograms and their arm weighs 2 kilograms. And uh, we happen to know that the center of mass of the trunk segment is located at um, x equals 5. And the center of mass of the arm segment is located at x equals 15. Okay? So then the question is, uh, how do you figure out what the uh, center of mass is of the trunk and the arm put together? Okay? So here's how you can think about doing that, right? So we could say uh, the center of mass of the trunk, trunk, plus arm, okay, times the mass of the trunk plus arm is equal to the center of mass of the trunk times the mass of the trunk plus center of mass of the arm times the mass of the arm. Okay, so that's that's the basic equation. So we can do this for all of, you can do this for as many segments as you want, okay? And the idea is, again, that the center of mass is going to be a distance, right? In this case, referenced in the x direction, so it's going to be a distance in, in centimeters. The mass is going to be in kilograms, and so everything in this equation needs to be in centimeter kilograms. And at the end of the day, what you want is you want to solve for this, so solve Right? So if you do this, then you can see that you're going to end up with um, center of mass of the trunk plus arm is equal to, uh, and now we have center of mass of the trunk, which is at 5, so we have 5 centimeters times the mass of the trunk, which is 20 kilograms, okay, plus we've got the center of mass of the arm, which is 15 centimeters times 2 kilograms, and this whole thing is going to be divided now by the mass of the trunk plus the arms, which is 22 kilograms, okay? So again, I've got centimeter kilogram, centimeter kilogram, you divide the whole thing by kilograms, okay? So 5 times 20 is going to be 100, and then 15 times 2 is 30 uh, centimeter kilograms, and then I divide it by 22 kilograms. Okay, so I'm going to get 130 divided by 22, which is 5.9 centimeters. Okay, so what this tells me is that the center of mass of my trunk plus my arm is located right about here at 5.9 centimeters. Okay, so basically by sticking your arm out, you shift the center of mass over a little less than, than one centimeter. Now, if you were holding a dumbbell at the end, of course, you, you could add the dumbbell on um, over here, and then that would add another mass at a, at a farther out location, and that would shift the center of mass over further. So um, that's just that's one way to think about it, and this is basically the technique that you'll need to use when you're doing the gymnast, and also when you're starting to think about different segment centers of masses um, as you move your arms up and down and as you move your leg up and down in the case of the lab. Okay, so um, just one other note is that right now we were only looking at gravitational forces, uh, so we, we really only paid attention to the x direction, but of course your center of mass uh, also has a y component, I just didn't bother to solve for it, so you would you would just solve for it as a separate quantity. Okay, um, so effectively that's that's what I've shown you here. I just I just did it on the paper, but again you've got your 20 kilograms times your five centimeters, your two kilograms times your 15 centimeters, and then uh, and you end up with 5.9, which is what I just described. Okay, um, okay. Uh, question five. Question five is always sort of the um, the the major mystery for people. And 
One of the things that I noticed, and I apologize, is that in the lab assignment it refers to table 3.1. This is a, a mistake and it should be table 4.1. Um, so one of the things is you need to know where the segment is located, you need to know the mass of the segment, and you need to know the length of the segment, okay? So um, in terms of segment length, for example, if you're looking at your arm, then um, you should measure the length of your arm directly. However, uh, if, you, if you forgot to do that, you can try and uh, get an estimate of that by looking it up in the table. And uh, next, you need to think about how each of the segment masses are moving when you have different positions. And so I'm going to show you an, an example of this um, and, and show you sort of what the drawing looks like. Um, but the quick version is you, you, know, you need to kind of assign a couple of variables. And then you need to write out a new equation. Okay, ultimately what you're going to get is two equations and two unknowns. So what I want to do right now is um, I'll leave this, I'll, you can, the slides are up on Blackboard and you can look at them to look at this formula, but I want to actually just draw you a couple pictures and explain what I mean here. Okay, so, um, no, you can discard those. Okay, so what I want to do here is uh, I'm going to just go here and imagine, for example, here's your person, right? So you've got this nice person. Oh, actually, okay, well, this is fine. I'm, I want to draw a person facing the other way. Okay, let's draw the person facing the other way. Okay, so basically you've got two scenarios, sort of one scenario where you have the person's arms down, and it's another scenario where you've got the person's arms up, okay? The only difference between these two scenarios is the position of the arms, okay? So what let's do is let's just break this person uh, in half, and talk about him in terms of their trunk without their arms. Okay, so here's a person with no arms. And then, plus, you either have the arms down or you have the arms up. Okay? So, um, so these are, this is basically the situation you've got. Okay, in any case, basically you have a, a mass and a center of mass for the body without arms, which is unchanging. And then you have this little mass that's associated with your arms, which is either located here or it's located there, okay? And so the question is, how do you, how do you figure out what's going on? Okay, so one thing that's often convenient to do is to measure this distance up to the shoulder. Because, again, this distance is not going to change. And so what we know is that in the first case, okay, so with arms down, we know that the arm center of mass is equal to, I'm going to call it SH for shoulder, distance to shoulder. Okay, so SH minus, uh, we'll call it COMA for arms, and that's referenced from the shoulder, right? Okay, so in one case, with the arms down, the arm center of mass is going to be located at the, if you measure from the feet up to the shoulder, and then you go back down uh, that amount, right? If the arms are up, you're going to have that the arm, COM, is equal to the shoulder plus this value, right? COMA, right? So that's kind of the major difference, right? Now, we know in, in all cases, that um, we have two different scale readings, right? And so we know in, in one case, right, we have scale with the arms down, right? So we can say scale arms down, right? That's the force. Okay, so this is in, uh, say, pounds, right? And then we're going to have um, the distance, which is basically the center of mass total arms down, right? And that's going to have to equal, again, we have this weighted average, right? So we know that the scale times this has to be equal to the, uh, the total location uh, or the, uh, the weighted average, right? So we ha we're going to have center of mass of uh, no arms. Okay, so this is basically the body minus the arms, okay, so it's, it's what we have right there, 
okay? But we don't know this location, right? And that's got to be times the mass of the body without arms, okay? And this one we can look up, right? So we have in that, in that nice winter's uh, table, we, we know how much mass uh, at least what proportion of the uh, body mass the arms are, are, so we can figure out what the body would be if we took away both arms, right? And then we also know that we're going to have the center of mass of the arms, okay? So in that case, we know that it's, it's uh, this, right? So we're going to have shoulder minus COM okay, times mass of the arms, right? Okay, so does that make sense? So basically what we've got now is we have that the total weighted average has to be equal to the, the body minus the arms, and then uh, we have the center of mass, uh, and then we have just the arms themselves, okay? So then you can do the same thing, right? So basically this is an unknown, right? And um, that is an unknown, okay? Now, we can do the same thing when you have your arms down, right? So in this case now, we're going to have, and, and by the way, uh, you, you're gonna, you can calculate this, right? So you know you're going to measure this, measure this, and you can calculate this, right? Okay, so you basically have two unknowns here. Now we're going to do the same thing, but now you're going to have the scale with arms up, and then you're going to have center of mass location with arms up. Okay, again, calculate, right, and measure. And that's going to be equal to Okay, so same first part. Okay, so same, right? Because you still have the center of mass with no arms and the body with no arms. That part remains the same. But now we have here SH plus COMA times the mass of the arms. Okay, right, and again, this is what we want. Okay, so now what we're going to end up with is we have uh, two equations and we have two unknowns, right? So unknown number one is your uh, quantity that you actually want to solve for, right? You want to solve for the center of mass with, uh, of the arms. Uh, and then quantity number two, which is unknown, is the center of mass of the body without the arms. And depending on how you solve these equations, you, you may actually be able to get away without bothering to solve for that, okay? so. Um, so that's basically how you break up a person and, and think about them in two different directions. Um, so similar principle you can use for the legs, right? If you look at the situation where you have somebody with their feet up, right? Basically, um, you know, we could break up uh, a person so that they, you think about they have a leg center of mass and then they have sort of the rest of their body center of mass, right? Or in the case of their, their leg being up, Right, if you have one leg sticking up, right now you have this leg center of mass and you have this leg center of mass. Um, and, and this one here is, is really going to be located over the hip. So hip distance, right? So again, if you knew the distance up to your hip, then you could assume that one leg center of mass is being located over the hip whereas the other leg center of mass is, is located some distance here, which you might want to solve for, okay? So um, same general principle, you could break up the body uh, in terms of the whole body minus a leg, and then uh, look at where the location of the leg is. It's either going to be at its, uh, at its regular spot when it's laying down, or it's going to be directly over the hip when it's up. Um, so you, you'd write a similar equation, okay? Um, so I think that's probably enough to get you all started. Um, please uh, let me know if you have any other questions, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you all next week.